in there's a huge great warship moored up down here this is great fun it really is hello and welcome back to my channel and today I'm off to London, traveling with National Express. A friend of mine's just dropped me off in Colchester. It's quite a nice morning. Sun's coming up. There's not too many people around here. And Colchester's such a good uh, location for catching public transport to uh, other locations. I started quite a few videos from here and dare say quite a few more as well to come. But I had such a great time in, in London uh, back in the summer a few months ago, especially on my fourth day when I travelled down the, the River Thames on the boat, explored Greenwich and then went on the cable car uh, across the Thames. I had a terrific day. So I'm going to repeat that today. I'm going to travel down to Stratford on the coach, catch the underground, then the cable car down to Greenwich and the bus into the centre of Greenwich and have another look around there before heading back uh, on the boat, hopefully, uh, to, uh, to Westminster and then on to my hotel, somewhere in the, which is somewhere in the uh, Victoria area. So I'm really looking forward to today. I've got no idea of exactly what I'm going to do, but a spot of lunch in Greenwich must be on the cards. So come with me as I travel to London with National Express. Well, that was absolutely brilliant. Arrived at Stratford on time at 10 o'clock. I just love traveling with National Express. I've traveled with them a few times now and um, I've always had great service. I've always arrived on time. Absolutely brilliant. I guess I'm a little biased by saying that because I work for National Express so I know how good their service is. But also I know my, some of my friends have had good experience with Megabus and Flixbus as well. I, but, I, but I like National Express because I get free travel. Now let's find the trains and the underground. Wow, that was absolutely brilliant. Straight to here on the DLR, straight to Victoria, changing at Canning Town. So quick and so easy. Just tap my Oyster card and jump on a train. But now I've got to find my bus to Greenwich. That means crossing the Thames on the cable car. <laughs> this will be fun. It was last time. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> so let's find out how to get in. I don't know if I know how to get in. There we go. on the cable car. Oh, brilliant. Doesn't seem three months since I was last on here. And uh, I do like cable cars. They're great fun. And even on a quite a cloudy day. It starts to have quite nice this morning. Being dropped off in Colchester. And the uh, weather's a little overcast at the moment, but it's still great fun up here at the cable car. Get good views over, over the Thames and the O2. And yeah, I'm really enjoying this. I'm really looking forward to my few days away here in London. I've got quite a few things planned and lots of little adventures. I'm just hoping the weather holds off. 
Yeah, forecast isn't looking good, but um, let's just see what happens. In the meantime, I'm going to enjoy my cable car ride. <laughs> this is great fun, it really is. That was absolutely brilliant. And the sun's come out as well. It's a bit, uh, a bit overcast on the other side of the Thames. We've got different weather here, which is brilliant. Now I've got to try and find my bus. So I head back to the bus station, That's where I arrived a few months ago, and, um, and find my bus into the centre of Greenwich. This is, this is North Greenwich. This is by the, uh, the, uh, the O2. Gosh, the O2 is just ahead of me. So I have to walk round the O2 to, uh, to the bus station. And uh, I'm so tempted to go into the O2 again and uh, have a wander around. But I did that last time I was here. So I'll save that for another day. Perhaps climb up the O2 as well. I'll save that for another day. But, uh, Let's head up to North Greenwich, let's head up to the main, main part of Greenwich uh, on the bus and, uh, and explore Greenwich again. I really enjoyed my time there a few months ago for my short little visit and uh, see what else we can discover to do in Greenwich. That's absolutely brilliant. Three hours after leaving Colchester on the coach, I'm in Greenwich and the sun is shining. And it only cost me seven pounds. My coach trip was free for staff discount. So the, the cable car was four pounds and one pound fifty for the uh, DLR and the, um, and the bus. But now I'm in Greenwich, it's time I had something to eat. I haven't even had breakfast this morning. I just turned into King William Walk. Oh, Goddards of Greenwich. This is an old traditional pie and mash shop. Goddards were founded back in 1880 by Alfred Goddard of Deptford. And they've had a shop here in, um, in Greenwich since 1952. That was the year that the Cutty Sark was first birthed here. So let's go in and get some pie and mash. I called into Goddards. I've got a pie, mash, peas and gravy. It's a place I've been wanting to go to for a long while. Um, it's so highly recommended by everybody in London to go to Goddard's for pie and mash. It looks absolutely delicious. It smells wonderful as well. Not that the camera picks up smells, but... Mm. Oh, that's so good. I put some gravy on it as well, comes with gravy. Got a lamb, lamb and rosemary um, pie. Oh, mm. it's a little breezy here today as well. I'm trying to avoid <laughs> getting gravy in my hair. I had a wonderful time the other day in Bristol. I got ice cream up my Mr. Whippy all in my hair. So I'm trying to avoid that at the moment. And it's I'm trying to take little mouthfuls in between. Um, Gusts of wind. Mm. Oh, that is so good. That is so good. Got a cup of tea as well. I do love a cup of tea. A cup of tea goes with absolutely everything. Let's put that down without spilling it. But yeah, absolutely. And I'm in front of the Naval College here in. Um, uh, in Greenwich. How brilliant is that? What a great place to um, to have lunch. And such a delicious lunch as well. Oh, mm. That really is so good. Oh. One of the best things about traveling is sampling foods you don't have very often. I know I had pie and mash in Weymouth 
um, West, way with Western Supermare the other week. But that was just, um, it's just an ordinary pie. These are homemade pies. And they're absolutely brilliant. They haven't paid me to say that. I'm tasting it. These are my personal thoughts. Mm. Absolutely wonderful. Well, I'm going to finish my pie mash and uh, a cup of tea and then uh, explore, probably go around to the market in, uh, here in Greenwich. Greenwich Market has also been recommended to walk around as well. Let's might see what we can find there. It's undercover, so, um, so uh, we'll have a, a little explore around there. As soon as I finish my pie mash and a cup of tea. Can't beat a cup of tea. Ooh. Oh, that's so refreshing. really was nice but I'm all, like, walking up now about King William um, King William Street and back down to uh, where Goddard's was and the entrance down into the market have a look and see what we can discover down there uh, really is absolutely fantastic that uh, pie and mash I can recommend it to anybody but now this is Turpin Lane I don't know why it's called Turpin Lane. The only Turpin I know is Dick Turpin. I don't think he operated around here. Highway are not my, uh, my strong point. So if you happen to know, then, um, then leave a description below and um, leave a comment below and uh, be very interested in finding out. But wow, onto cover section of uh, Greenwich Market. I do like markets. Had a good look round um, Borough Market last time I was here. And uh, this is rather nice as well. Don't really want anything to eat or drink, but the smell of food is making me hungry again. It's about half hour, 40 minutes since I last ate, so uh, might nibble at something. Always like a nibble of something, find something to nibble, something tasty to nibble, so we can find. Um, can I get uh, just two lamb samosas please? Thank you. No thank you, no. No thank you, no, just, just, just the two samosas. Just come into the market and I can smell Indian food and uh, couldn't resist picking up a, a couple of samosas. These are lamb. Oh, just love samosas. Mm. Oh, you can smell the aromatic spices coming off. They're freshly cooked and freshly made Indian street food here, on, um, here in Greenwich Market. I do like Indian food. It's one of my, I think it has to be my favorite Indian food. Not too spicy. There are places in, in India which do really nice spicy food, but without, without it being hot and blowing your mouth open with the, with the chili. Um, I think I went to Goa about 25 years ago and the aromatic food there, the spices they used. It's Portuguese influence as well with, with um, the Indian cooking in, uh, in, in Goa. It's absolutely delicious. Mm. You can have samosas with almost anything at any time of the day. They're absolutely delightful. 
Mm. Anyway, let's go see what else we can find here in Greenwich Market. Lolly, or like you know, an old-fashioned delicious. Quite a scoundery. One, two, three, four. One rum and raisin, yeah. One rum and raisin, please, yeah. Is that a shake? Is that a chocolate brownie? No. That's very lovely. Unified fruit. No, no, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna purchase one because I've got a sweet tooth. Do you want to try the nut? I'm gonna try this just to make sure I don't like it. Just to confirm. Just to confirm, I don't like it. I still do like it. Oh, no. Well, then here's the uh, Just found the most delightful little shop that sells fudge. I do like a bit of fudge. I went in there and sampled quite a few. Only bought one slice, though. Uh, rum and raisin. I do like rum and raisin ice cream, so I think rum and raisin fudge should be quite nice as well. But um, sampling their chocolate one and their coffee one and... The vanilla one and then lime one, one or two others. Yeah, that was. Oh, I can taste the fudge still. Delicious. Gonna look forward to this later. Have a little bit of fudge. Yes, make it. Try make it last. Normally I, I just eat these things, but given the amount of sugar that's in fudge, I'm only gonna have a little bit at a time, I think. But uh, yeah. If, I really enjoyed Greenwich Market, there's just so much here. So, uh, explore a bit more and see what else I can find. Got myself another cup of tea. The sweet taste in my mouth of fudge. Absolutely delightful. And I just need a cup of tea to accompany it, I think. Uh, there's a lot of sugar in fudge. And, um, either I'm going to look forward to my, um, my slab of fudge later. I'm going to uh, really savour it and make it last several days. I do like a bit of fudge, and especially if it's homemade as well. You can get it in the, in the supermarkets, but it's just not the same as homemade fudge. And I don't have it very often because it is very high in sugar, but it does taste absolutely delicious. And such a friendly little shop as well. So if you're in Greenwich Market, come down to the fudge shop and enjoy some fudge. And a little cafe espresso next door as well. Nice cup of tea. But I'm gonna leave the market now and head out into Greenwich and head down towards the river and see what um, you discover down there today. Uh, I didn't go down to the river. Um, on my last visit, well, apart from getting off the boat, obviously, <laughs> but uh, we'll walk down the river and just see what um, till we can see and enjoy the sunny summer weather. Having a bit of an Indian summer at the moment here in September. Uh, we occasionally do, so I used to, used to try and go away for a few days around the middle of September. But I've usually had good weather apart from last week in Bristol. But that was last week, this is this week. We we'll look forward to some nice weather this week here in London. We'll go out and do some more London things, whatever London things are, and uh, we'll enjoy ourselves in London for a few days. In the meantime, I'm gonna finish my cup of tea. Oh, that tastes so good. I think I'll have to come back to Greenwich Market on my next visit. I didn't know they had a Greenwich Market here in Greenwich. Um, I was exploring online a few things to do in Greenwich and it came up. And I'm so glad that uh, I found it. It's, um, it's rather nice. I've had a walk around the area as well. And even though I'm on uh, College Approach, the road called College Approach, some pretty impressive buildings around here. Um, I haven't found any blue flags and I would have thought that some admiral or something or someone or someone of important some, 
Admiral of the Fleet would have actually have, have stayed in one of the houses in and around the docks here. They are very impressive indeed. Uh, but maybe there are some blue plaques in uh, in Greenwich, but obviously not where I've been walking. Which is, uh, which is a shame, because I do like looking at blue plaques. You learn so much from a local, local area by looking at blue plaques, discovering who people were and what they did uh, within the area you're in. But behind me is a, is a pub called the, uh, the Gypsy Moth. Uh, Gypsy Moth was um, a small single vessel, a small um, sailing vessel, a sailing ship, boat I should say, not a ship, little boat, uh, owned by Sir Francis Chichester. I think it was back in 1966-67. He made the um, single-handed trip around the world. He sailed around the world on his own in a little sailing dinghy. Uh, it used to be moored up here in Greenwich when I came here back in the um, back in the 70s. It was actually moored up here next to the Cutty Sark, which is just behind me. But in doing so, he was in his 60s when he went round the world, single-handedly. He broke several records as well. The fastest voyage around the world in a small vessel, and uh, the longest non-stop passage in a small vessel and the, um, the longest single-handed passage around the world as well. He broke a lot of records that, on that trip. But it was taken down a few years ago. It was starting to uh, deteriorate, apparently. But it's been fully restored and is actually now, now a working little ship again. A little ship, a little boat. I'm not sure where it's moored up, but it's... Uh, it's still in use, which is nice. It's nice that these famous craft are, are still used and cared for, and other people can enjoy them. And even you never know, somebody else may uh, decide to go around the world in it again, which would be rather interesting. But uh, just walking down here, there's a huge, great warship moored up down here. Got the numbers or the letter L and then the, the number 14 L14. But it's quite an impressive one, it's flying the British flag at the front. I'm not sure what it is. It's, I don't know anything about military ships at all, but uh. There's interesting cannons here as well on the uh, on the key side, and some Uber boats out in the out on the river, tides out as well, and people mudlarking, looking for historic objects on the um, on the on the shore. It really is very pleasant here as well, very pleasant, especially on a sunny day like today. Another interesting fact about Sir Francis Chichester is that he was knighted by Queen Elizabeth II on the steps of the Royal Naval College. She used the same sword that Elizabeth I had used to knight Sir Francis Drake back in the uh, mid 16th century. I must, I guess that was uh, very significant for Sir Francis Chichester. But he died uh, quite a quite a good old age at um, in 1972, on the 26th of August. But, uh, yeah, very nice, brave, pleasant here. Anyway, let's, uh, let's head on back into Greenwich and see what else we can discover while I'm here. Just walking down onto the beach, because it is actually technically a beach, because River Thames here in Greenwich is, is tidal. So effectively, I'm walking on the beach. I'm walking a lot of stones, a lot of bits of metal, 
and other things which the uh, the river has, has given up on high tide. First time I've actually been down onto the beach on the River Thames. Uh, a lot of people do come down here and have a look and see what they can find. It's called mudlarking. Uh, you need a license to, uh, to mudlark and any fines have to be handed in and registered with um, the archaeologists or the Museum of London. I think they, ha they, ha they, um, they sell the licenses to mudlark. So if I do find any um, bars of gold and treasure, I can't keep it. It's a shame because uh, I have to find something. I just have to put it back for someone else to find officially. Oh god, gotta be careful where I'm putting my feet. You get a good view of the old warship from here as well. Let's turn around. There we go. View the old warship. It is interesting just walking around because you never know what you find when you walk on a beach walked on beaches all over the all over the world and you find so many interesting things on beaches interesting shells rock pools with little bits of life in it hermit crabs or a little fish or something where well, you find interesting objects just washed up on the beach remains of marine life or um, something that's fallen overboard from a ship but just up ahead is um an old chain and an anchor. So let's, uh, let's go and take a look at that. It's quite interesting looking at this old anchor here and the chain. They're very rusted up, so they've been down here a long while. Now I've got to be careful. Uh, oh dear. Careful where I'm putting my feet as well. Because even though the tide's out, there's still patches of water here. And it's still quite, um, quite squidgy underfoot. It's also got a few bits of metal and things sticking through the rocks. So I need to be very careful where I um, where I put my feet. I don't want to slip into anything and uh, do myself an injury. But let's just try and, oh my gosh. There's lots of things here, lots of different types of, uh, of rope and thicknesses of rope. And lots of bits of wood. And uh, yeah, it's, Really is quite interesting. But I think that anchor's probably been there several hundred years. But just a little way further up is, a, is an old slipway. Now this really is quite interesting because let's remember the, the years gone by they were working dockyards around here building ships and uh, they were launched on the slipways. And you can see the old blocks where the, um, the ships used to slide down into the, uh, into the Thames. See that behind me? Really is rather fascinating to, uh, to see this. London's maritime history, um, visible only at low tide. Uh, yeah, very interesting indeed. Let's walk a bit further down. See the um, local wildlife behind me as well. This is about as close as I can get to the warship. Uh, well, I'm going to head back now, I think, because um, I don't know if I'm supposed to be down here or not. I think you probably are. But as I said, you need a, need a license to mudlark. I'll be very careful where I put my feet as well, because it is very slippery. And the last thing I want to do is fall over and... Ouch. Oh, I just want to trot on there. I don't want to fall over and injure myself because uh, that will create even more problems in the coming days if I'm injured. But here we 
Yeah. Just going to put the camera down onto the uh, onto the beach and let you see what I'm walking on. So, uh, looking at the ground directly in front of me, there's lots of lots of rocks and a bit of a bit of pot. Not sure what this is, but what date it is. I'm not, I'd say it's probably Victorian, but uh, put it back where it came from. Let somebody else find it. Oh. It's quite interesting. What else have we got? Oh. And a uh, smooth stone. Looks like an egg. It's actually a smooth stone. Feels like chalk. Yeah, there's a bit of chalk in this one, I recognise that. There's bits of slate here as well, and lots of bits of, uh, of seaweed. Lots of bits of seaweed as well. But uh, it's quite. This uh, one pops. There we go. Yeah, it's quite interesting. But no gold bars, no treasure, no, uh, no X marks the spot, the hidden treasure. It's still interesting to come down here and take a look. Little, there's just rocks and bits of metal, and bits of rope. Usual things that have been discarded by, uh, ooh, by vessels over the years. Yeah, very interesting. Right, oh, let's head back up towards the uh, town of Greenwich. Borough of Greenwich. I think it's a borough. The area of Greenwich. Let's go, on. Let's go back up onto, up onto dry land. off your feet after walking around Greenwich for a past few hours. Really enjoyed going into the visitor centre and look at the exhibition in there. I didn't manage to do that last time, perhaps I should have done, but I'm glad I did that. That was very interesting. Talking about the history of Greenwich and some of the people who were involved in shaping Greenwich as well. And heading back on the Thames now you get quite a nice view of the um, an impressive warship moored up here in Greenwich. But this is where I end this video, on an Uber boat going down the Thames. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and follow my journey. And uh, we'll see you next time for another adventure somewhere else.